Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I am going to be answering now question number six from the exercise 7a of chapter 7 um, from the P3 International A level um, Edexcel a Pure Mathematics a textbook. So the textbook for P3 for International A level is chapter 7 on integration. Um, exercise 7a question number six uh, I've been requested to answer this question so I'll do so here we're told given that the integral of 3e to the power of x plus 6e to the power of minus 2x with respect to x between the limits of b and 2 is equal to 0 find the value of b okay so we have to first of all of course integrate this now one of the simplest integrations is of e to the power of x because e to the power of x doesn't change so the first expression is absolutely no problem. It just stays exactly as it is. So 3e to the power of x integrates to 3e to the power of x. The second expression, well, first of all, you keep it as it is. So it's 6e to the power of minus 2x. But here you have a function inside the function. You have e to the power of something. There's a function inside it. So we have to use a chain rule. And we have to, we have to basically differentiate this. Okay. Um, and then we have to divide by the differential. So for integration, you integrate, okay, as normal, all right, and then you divide by the differential what's inside the function, so I'm going to divide by minus 2. Now, the only reason I could actually um, do this is because multiplying the function is a constant, and the differential what's inside the function is also a constant. If it was, for example, 6e to the power of minus x squared, then I couldn't integrate it in that way because I have to have something multiplying the function which is the differential of what's inside the function now inside the function here is something which you differentiate you're going to get an x term and there's no x term multiplying it so it has to be of this form where you have the differential of something multiplied by the original function and that that's what pattern you look for when you do this reverse of the chain rule okay so I can integrate this by doing 6 e to the power of minus 2x divided by minus 2. So there's no problem with that. Um, and we're going to have our limits between b and 2, and that's equal to 0. So now I can simplify this. This is 3e to the power of x minus 3e to the power of minus 2x is equal to 0 between the limits of b and 2. Now I can put the values in. So if I put the values of b in, I'll have um, 3e to the power of b minus 3e to the power of minus 2b. Then I'll have minus, and I'll have 3e to the power of 2, just putting 2 in there, minus 3e to the power of minus 4, and that's equal to 0. So what I can do here um, to solve this is actually quite simple because if I add this whole term to both sides. I'll have 3e to the power of b minus 3e to the power of minus 2b is equal to 3e squared minus 3e to the power of minus 4. Now these two, if they're equal to each other, then you can see they're almost the same. They look the same. You've got 3e and here you've got 3e. And you've got minus 3e, you've got minus 3e. And this is the power of b and this is the power of 2. And this is the power of minus 2b and this is the power of minus 4. So we can see that b must be equal to 2 because if this is 2 you're going to have 3e to the power of 2 minus 3e to the power of minus 4 which is the same as that so we don't actually have to do any further solving to the, for this it will be a bit complicated to find the other other way uh, in any other way so much easier for us to just see look they're basically the same thing all right they're almost identical apart from this has a power of b this has a power of 2 this has a power of minus 2b, this has a power of minus 4. So when b equals 2, both of these will become true. So b must be 2. Okay, so it's uh, a lot simpler than we might think it is. We could go on and try and solve it. It's going to be complicated because you're going to have um, b terms underneath and on top and two separate fractions. It will make it complicated. This is much easier to just spot this kind of uh, solution at this stage. Okay, they're exactly, exactly the same. Okay. So the only thing that's different here is the b and the 2 and the minus 2b and the f minus 4. And if b is 2, then both of these will become the same as those. So b must be 2. Simple as that. That's question number 6. I'll also go on to question number 7. Okay, now for question number 7 from the same exercise 
I've uh, been also asked to solve this question. So you have 7a, b, and c. I'll start with 7a. Um, okay, it says solve the equation fx equals 0. You have f of x equals 1 over 8x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4 over x, and x is greater than 0. Okay, so we've got to solve the equation where this is equal to 0. So you have 1 over 8 x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4 over x is equal to 0. Now, the way I'd like to solve questions like this is I like to get rid of the fractions. So what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by 8x, the LCM of the denominators. And if I do that, if I multiply the first term by 8x, the 8 will cancel out, and I'll have x to the power of 3 over 2 times x. Now, x to the power of 3 over 2 times x is like x to the power of 3 over 2 times x to the power of 1, you have to add the powers, and that gives you 3 over 2 plus 1, which is 2 over 2, which is 5 over 2. So x to the power of 5 over 2 minus, and if I multiply this term by 8x, the x is cancelled. I'm left with 4 times 8, which is 32. So minus 32 equals 0. So now I can say x to the power of 5 over 2 is equal to 32. So I want to find x. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this power of 5 over 2. So I can do this in, in a number of ways. What I can do is I can think about it as this means, there's one way of doing it like this. I can say this means this is the square root of x to the power 5. This is what this means. Okay, this is what this means here. So if I want to get rid of the square root, um, I can basically square both sides. So I'll have five x to the power 5 equals 32 squared. And if I want to get rid of the power of 5, I take the root of 5 of both sides. So I have the root 5 of x to the power 5 is equal to the root, the fifth root of 32 squared. Okay, so now I can go ahead and solve it. Let me just make a bit more space here. I can move this down. So now I can go ahead and solve it because this is going to give me x equals now the fifth root of 32, or 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So the fifth root of 32 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I've got my answer, x equals 2. I can also do it like this. I can say I want to get rid of the power of 5 over 2, so I can raise this to the power of 2 fifths. Because if I multiply, uh, when I raise it to the power of something, I have to multiply the powers. If I multiply 5 over 2 by its reciprocal, that's going to give you x to the power of 1, which is what I want to find. And so I have to do the same thing to this side. I have to raise this to the power of 2 over 5, which again will lead us to this step because 32 to the power of 2 over 5 means the fifth root of 32. This is the root, this is the power. So that's going to give you, as I said, um, 32 squared, sorry, the fifth root of 32 squared because you've got the power here too. That's the power, that's the root. So we've got the fifth root of 32 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So x equals 4. Um, and there ha we have the answer for part A. So we found the, the solution, x equals 4. Then part B, it says, find f the integral of f of x when f of x is equal to 1 over 8 x to the power of 3 minus 4 over x. So I want to integrate this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first write f of x in a way which is easy to do with integration. So I have 1 over 8 x to the power of 3 over 2. That's fine. But I'll write this. Um, in fact, I don't have to do anything to this. It's going to be fine to integrate like this. So I can just go ahead and straight away integrate it. I have 1 over 8 x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4 over x. Because it's just over x, I can integrate this. Or I have to integrate this using lin. So now this is going to give me 1 over 8 x to the power of 3 over 2 plus uh, 1 is 5 over 2. Divided by 5 over 2 minus 4 times the lin of the modulus of x. Don't forget the plus c. This is a indefinite integral. You have to put plus c at the end. So this is like 1 over 8 divided by 5 over 2. Let me just do take that to the side. 1 over 8 divided by 5 over 2, which is the same as 1 over 8 times 2 over 5, which gives me 1 over 20. So this will give me a fraction 1 over 20, x to the power 5 over 2, minus 4 lin the modulus of x plus c, and there's the answer for part b. And part c, it says evaluate um, this integral between 1 and 4. So I, I've got to take my answer that I got just now, and I've got to evaluate between 1 and 4. So I have 1 over 20, and I have um, x to the power 5 over 2 
minus 4 lin of the modulus of x plus c. Uh, I don't have to put plus c now. I've got a definite integral here now. And also, I don't have to put the modulus of x because I know x is greater than 0. I only put the modulus of x if, I, if I'm not sure whether this number is going to be uh, negative. If this is negative, then it will give you something undefined. So you have to write modulus of x when you integrate. But as we know, as we know that x is greater than 0, okay, we can write this even in this, in this stage. I, I can write this. I know as x is greater than 0, then this is going to be 1 over 20 x to the power 5 over 2 minus 4 lin x plus c. You don't have to put the modulus there. Okay, so now I've got to now put the limits of 4 and 1 because this has already been integrated. This is the, this is f of x integrated. All I have to do now is put these limits in. So I have 1 over 20 times 4 to the power of 5 over 2 minus 4 lin 4 minus, and I've got 1 over 20 times 1 to the power of 5 over 2 minus 4 lin 1. Okay, so this is going to give me, um, actually this is what we, we had initially, so this is going to be, a f the square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So this is 32 over 20 minus 4 lin 4 minus, now the 1 to the power of anything will be 1, so this is minus 1 over 20, and this is going to give me 0, because lin 1 is 0. So I'll just end up with this. And we're almost done now, so we can say that this is going to be 32 over 20 minus 1 over 20, which is 31 over 20 minus 4 lin 4. And there is the answer to the last part of this question, which is part C. So that's question number 7 done as well. Okay, I hope that was clear. Um, other questions to do with um, integration will be found uh, in this P3 integration we found in the playlist over here. Questions from this chapter of P3, uh, the textbook, I'll collect together in this playlist. And uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top of the page, I'll give a, you know, a playlist, a card which takes you to a playlist for P3 past paper that you might want to watch. Thank you for watching and see you soon.